Can you edit? Yeah, we're going. <laughs> Hello everyone and welcome to the fabulous River Dane. This is my favourite river in the whole wide world, when it's on form that is. Truth be told, I don't really want to be talking to you, I want to be getting some fish, you know what I mean? But it's just the kind of guy I am, I'm going to talk you through exactly what I'm going to do today to catch these lovely wild river fishes. Now, conditions aren't ideal to be fair, uh, the river's probably about 18 inches down, um, it's overcast at the minute which is absolutely brilliant, but we've got some sundew later on so... The sooner I can talk you through these rigs and I'm going to catch these fish, then the sooner I can get catching some fishes for you. The river's got lots of grayling in it, uh, lots of brownies, there's lots of chubbing and barbel. Not so many roach and dace, unfortunately, anymore, because of them nasty minks and cormorants. But never mind, they're making a comeback a little bit further downstream, and hopefully we'll go and catch some of them later on. First things first, so let's go through the rigs. So, the first one I'm going to talk you through is your traditional sort of stick float set up. We've got a 13 foot light waggler rod. Um, we've got a, a fixed match spool reel. It's got 0.16 mainline on. Um, I don't want to fish too heavy a mainline. Reason being on some of the swims that we're going today, not this one necessarily, um, you've got quite a fast flow going on and the friction's going to be too much if you're using too thick a mainline. So 0.16 is around about right. Coming to the float first, Put that rod down. We've got a four number four. It's a shouldered alloy stem stick float. Now, it can baffle some people, you know, choosing the right stick float. There's loads out there. You know, there's ones that are actual sticks, hence the name stick floats. Uh, but the ones I prefer to use are these alloy stick floats. Now, the reason I prefer them is, again, when the water's quite fast and turbulent, that's going to sit nice through the river so you get a nice true uh, trot down. Um, shotting wise, it couldn't be simpler really. All I've got is basically bulks of two number eights, probably what's that, three or four inches apart. Now you can see it's not very deep where we're fishing today. We've probably got what, two and a half foot, that's all. Um, there's a few swims that are a little bit deeper, uh, but in general, this is, this is all you're going to get. The fish generally take that bait as soon as it's sort of like going down with your loose feed, which we'll come to later on. So we've got a bulk curve. Two number eights, got five, five groups of them, down to a single number eights, and you can see there we've got a nice long cut length on. I always like to use long cut lengths, especially on natural waters. You just get that bait falling so natural through the water. Um, plus, it, it's acting natural with your, with your loose feed as well. You know, obviously, when you've got the current and the turbulence of the water, it's, it's sending the loose maggots all over the place, so you want your hook bait um, to act exactly the same as what your, what your loose feed is. That's when you tend to get a lot, a lot of the bigger fish, you know, the fish that have seen it all before. Um, it's a 0.12 foot length. Again, I don't want to be fishing too heavy. This water, it's probably only about two degrees. It's proper freezing cold. If you're fishing too heavy and it doesn't look natural, the fish will look at it and think, that doesn't look right, I'm not eating it. And they won't do, trust me. Hook-wise, we've got an 18s uh, B911 on that. It's a barbless hook. It's a barbless hook to river today. Um, I don't tend to go any smaller than that. Um, I honestly believe that these wild river fish, they, they see the bait and they just tend to sort of like snatch at it rather than, you know, them typical wise commercial F1s, carp. They can come into your peg and actually inspect your rig. And rivers, it's a little bit different. They'll see the bait and seem to snatch at it. So that's the first rig, nice and easy. We'll go on to... A bit of a bit of a beastie rig next. It's on a longer rod. It's a 16 foot rod. If you notice, the reel is completely different. It's proper proper old school reel. It's a close face reel. And then basically, all you do to let the line out on this is just click the centre, and that's it. You know, the line's coming off nice and easy. Then when you want to connect the line, when you strike it into a fish, you just wind it forward, and that's it. You're straight into business. So, float wise for this one, it's probably more so associated with you know your, your traditional bolo fishing for real deep water fishing but i like them on these kind of rivers especially when we come to some other swims later on when it's really turbulent you might only have sort of 18 inches two foot of water but if you're using a big heavy positive float like this four gram bolo float you know it rides through the current really nice so coming down the line it, it's really easy set up we've got you can see there there's four uh, aas and we've got a tiny number four underneath that Coming down the line again, we've got another single number four, and again, you notice I've got this long hook length on. 
Now on this rig, I'm fishing a little bit heavier. I'm fishing a 0.14 line with a 16 hook. So I'll be fishing sort of two, three um, maggots on this, hoping to catch the bigger fish. But this rig's more so for, for the faster water. You know, it's really turbulent. And with that rig, you, your bait's gonna be all over the place. Um, so this is what I'll come to later on. Now, feeding wise, um, we've probably been here about five minutes. We've not been here long, but basically what I've been doing is just literally pinching out sort of five or six maggots, that's all. Again, it's like commercial fishing. You want to sort of feel your way into a session. Now, usually what happens, you're going to get your fish on your very first or, you know, your second trot down. If you don't catch anything in that, generally there's not going to be many there. Uh, don't forget these fish haven't really seen, you know, bait before, especially with being how cold it has been. Uh, and it's just after a flood as well. The fish should, you know, come into the bait as soon as you see it they'll come into it so if you don't catch one your first one or two trot downs and then i mean look on fishing today we'll just put them in for the fishes we've got two rods we've got a landing net and i've got my bait apron everything i could want you know you don't you don't need to carry all your gear with you for this this kind of session uh, just travel really light i'm looking to fish sort of four or five swings on this particular stretch and then we'll go a bit further downstream where there's probably another seven or eight swims you're looking to catch you know sort of half a dozen of fish out of out of each swim if you do that it's brilliant and it's just the best fishing not just this time of year you know all the time through obviously i wish it didn't have a close season but that's for something else i don't need to mention that now it's just fantastic i really recommend you give it a go um so what i'm going to do now i'm going to creep down here david bellamy style get into position trumble along the gravel bed just introduce a few maggots i'll do that for sort of 30 seconds to a minute you know, I'll just put a couple of uh, feeds in and I'm going to bait up with a single red maggot, put it in, and let's see if we can catch a fish. Oosh. like that you notice I'm still feeding whilst I've got this fish on that's very important fish like these grayling they'll, they'll go around in shoals of sort of fours and fives so if you can keep that shoal feeding whilst you're playing the fish chances are you're going to catch one the very next trot down oh yeah oh and it's fell off Eesh! Never mind, we'll catch another one. Barbless hooks. Big grayling, that and all. Are you still filming, yeah? yeah. So if you notice, just before I'm going to cast in, I'm going to feed the bait first, and that's very important. Always feed sort of slightly downstream, and then I want to cast in front of where my maggots are going so that when my bait's going down it's going down with a loose feed so i'm going to feed first and i'm going to cast a little bit further downstream but my bait's going down with it and we missed the bite Didn't miss that one though. So as soon as I've up one, get some bait in. Oh, it's a little brownie. We'll get him netted. Yeah! So three trot downs, three bites, one that's fell off, but never mind. Most important thing, as I say, is keep that bait going in. Oh, it's a lovely brownie. Again, not putting loads in. Look at that beautiful little thing. Have you ever? 
Oh yes, enough to warm you up on a cold morning, isn't it? Just make sure with these fish as well, especially river fish, they give their all. So, oh, he's off. I was going to say, make sure that they're revived completely before you put them back. Grayling in particular, they give their all during a the fight. They're similar to barbel. Um, so you've got to make sure that you know there's all that uh, current oxygen going through the gills before you release them. Because sometimes if you just plunk them back, they can go belly up and go off and and die basically. Obviously, that's not what we want to happen. So make sure you revive them proper first. <coughs> These grayling twist and turn all the time. So what I'm doing, it's seeing that. You see the grayling downstream there. And what I'm trying to do is bring it upstream. Remembering to feed. You watch him, it's beautiful watching him in this clear river. They don't even look as all the fighting. All they're doing is just using that massive, whoa, he's going now. Using that big dorsal fin. Way over there. Just using that big dorsal fin to full effect. You know, all they've got to do is just sort of turn on the side and, you know, the, the flow, because it's quite strong here. It's just, it's just taking it, you know. Oh, look at that bad boy. Wowzers, Richard. Just you wait a minute. Just let me get these beauties fed up again. Oh, have you ever. Look. Oh, that's so wiry. Look at that for a grayling. That's probably... One of the biggest grayling I've ever caught on this particular river. That is a monster, let me tell you. I mean, grayling, I'm not sure of the record. I don't think it's much over four pound, though. It might not even be four pound. And whoa, that's a good, that's a good sort of pound and a quarter getting on for a pound and a half. It's this big fin here, that's where they get all the power from. Look how wiry they are. It's like the same as barbel. Come on, come on, my beauty. This big old fin there, look at that. So all it's got to do is basically just turn, turn on the side in the current and it's going to pull it downstream. There's such hard fighters and they're twisting and turning all the time. Right, let's get the hook out of here, beauty. Look at that, right in them scissors there. Beautiful. Right, and let's get him back. Right, this is what I mean about making sure they're fully revived when you're putting them back. You see how lively he is, so hopefully he'll go, but they give their all, you see? You see how lethargic they are now? Oh, this water's freezing. See how lethargic they are? There you go. Look at that. Oh, can you still see him there? Should we catch him again? You see if he's hungry? Brilliant, and he's gone. Make sure you do that. It's so important that you let them, you know, recover completely before you put them back. Let's catch them all. Isn't it? Oh, look at that. So we've had five trots down and five bites. The first three fish I've hooked, one fell off. Uh, the next trot down was a little bit further down. I missed that one. And then a little bit further again after that one. If you can see in the river, pan round, it's pan round, you can see that snag. Well, the fish had just backed off to that and that's usually what will happen. Initially, when you first start fishing, them fish will come straight in onto your bait. And as soon as you start catching a few, the, the, the shoal will naturally just back off away from you. They shouldn't go. If you look further downstream, we've got that nice long glide, a little bit deeper water. So I think what's going to happen, we're just going to eventually draw the fish up from there. Hopefully we'll get some snarling chubs later on. But, you know, it could be one of them. This could be the last fish I catch. Did I mention I could score another one? Look at this, another beautiful grayling, big daddy grayling. And you know, shoals of these fish, you know, these are, you don't really catch fish like this anymore. They're just absolutely awesome. Look how wiry they are. All he wants to do is get back to his watery home. A bit like me when I want to be all snarled up in bacon sandwiches since it's nine o'clock in the morning. Rich, and you got me out doing this lovely feature? But yeah, no, what I'm saying is, you know, if we don't catch any more after this one, it's simply a case of getting your gear and then just going, you know, a little bit further downstream and repeating the, the same again. Let's get this beauty back. Oh, he jumped out, Rich, he jumped out. How dare he? But he's recovered and he's off. Push. Let's catch some more, mate. Quick before they go. Oh, have you seen this today? 
Oh, and it's fell off. You went very John Wilson for a second then. No, I'm not doing any of you laughing yet. If you noticed, when I'm trotting down, I'll show you this time. Again, still not feeding many maggots, literally five or six, that's all. Get the fish competing. If you notice, when I'm trotting down, what I'm doing, so I'm putting that further than where I've just loose fed, but what I'm doing, I'm holding, you can see I'm holding back hard on that line and letting the flow, you know, letting the float take me float, peeling it back off. So I'm in, I'm in complete control with that float all the time. Yeah, if I get a bite now, all I've got to do is literally just lift the rod. Going a bit too close to that snag. We don't want to walk a Mr. Chub there. So I'll feed again and I'm just going to draw that float back. And again, open the bail arm, peel a bit of line off and follow the float down with your rod. So you can change, you know, how fast your bait's going. If I want it to go full flow, I'll just take my finger off. But what I'd want to do, ideally, is be in complete control with that float. So just using the middle finger, just stop the line all the time. As soon as your float starts to wobble, you don't really want to do that. So you want to sort of anticipate before that float starts to wobble because it doesn't look natural. It's been, oh, just excuse me while well, I whack into another one. Just before that float starts to wobble, you want to make sure you've got a nice slack line going with your float. Get some more bait in. If you notice when I'm playing the fish as well, I'm keeping my rod low. I don't want to keep it high. So I don't want, one, I don't want that fish to come right on top of the water and spook the other shoal. As I say, you're not going to catch loads of fish out of the same swim. It's, it's, it's been brilliant today, but I thought they would have gone by now, to be fair. Another lovely grayling. And again, you can see when I'm netting, what I want to do is bring the fish upstream and let the fish glide back into the net. So you see he's right opposite me now, so I'm going to lift that rod, start lifting it, fish comes up, and you just want to guide him into the net. Just like that. Oh, yes. Here we've got another. Look at that, beautiful. What a stunt they are today. Best thing to do, if you've not got a rod rest, just tuck that rod under your arm. That net can go back down in the water now. I'm not bothered about him. Or oh, not the fish. He's on a barbless hook in it. And again, make sure that it's completely revived before you let it go. The fish will tell you when you want to kick off. That's it. Go and join the rest of the show. I'll catch you again in a minute. Yay! So this is usually your typical average stamp uh, of grayling, you know, sort of five ounce, six ounce, but we've had some proper bad boys today, which is amazing. Now, them are proper shellfish, these little ones, so hopefully, we'll catch a few more of them. What's freezing? Where that weed is. Isn't it? Okay, so we're on the full swim on this particular stretch. And this is actually my favorite swim on the whole entire river. Um, it's got everything. Basically, we've got a nice deep hole there where we can cast into. Usually start off catching fish there. And then what happens, a fish will come out of that and naturally just push downstream. And you can see in the middle of the river there, you've got a nice chubby looking snag. Right at the bottom of the swim, you get that in rich. You know, there's like a tree coming across the river. That's a big deep hole there, and that's where the chub tend to sit in the barbel in the summer. So all that's going to happen, you're just constantly bringing fish through all the time. Uh, it's a fantastic swim. What I've been doing, I've been putting maggots in sort of every, you know, 20, 30 seconds. Again, not loads, five or six, uh, but I'll do that for sort of four or five minutes, get the fish confident, and I, I fully expect to catch a fish first go. You normally start off catching the grayling, uh, and then a little bit into the session, the barbel will move in. Um, again, still a bit clear. You can see there's, there's no need for that, that heavy float that we've got. It's only a nice, smooth glide. So that's why we've got our light stick float on. I'll put it a little bit deeper, because um, it's, it's not that deep. As I say, it's probably about 18 inches to two foot down. Um, basically, what happens when that sun gets over them trees and really pierces through the water, that's when it's going to go really hard. So without further ado, let me show you what I mean about catching one, usually when you first trot down. So I've just fed them maggots, put that stick float in, watch that down, and it's going to go, it's got to go, it's got to go. Anywhere down there, fully expect a bite, like that. <laughs> 
there's another nice grayling again as soon as you put one get that bait in and that, that bite's all come because I, I put that bait in to start with you know I've got the fish nice and confident and that's what you're rewarded with lovely graylings like that oh he's an hooked himself as well not as big as in that other swim yet but that's my first cast give me time typical average stamp grayling probably about six seven ounce something like that put him back again because obviously i can't get low to the water because i've not got my uh, chest waders on just make sure that fish is fully revived you'll see what i mean it's going to sort of belly up so make sure he spins around like that and he's kicking before you release it i'm already let's go and catch another one Put some bait in Find me hook in this net. There we go, that's a beauty of barbless hooks, it comes straight out. Right. You see again I'm getting confident. Even though I want to get in there straight away and catch a fish, the most important thing is getting them confident. So feed first and cast into them. Oh look at that as one risen then. See that Rich? And he's on. <laughs> Brilliant. I thought you saw the grayling come up and take the loose offerings then. Awesome. I must be starving after that uh, cold snap we've had. No one's been on. It's a bit better this one. Again, see I'm keeping my rod nice and low. Bring the fish upstream, then pull it up and let the fish swim back into your net. Oh, that's a nice grayling, Rich. Come on. Whoa, come on. Whoa, where's he going, Rich? He's here. Oosh. Beautiful. It's more like it, isn't it? Let's get some more baiting. Look at that beauty. That's like the stamp we were catching before. A good pound. We can get him out. Look how wire he is. He's, he's a good pound and a bit, isn't he? Beautiful. Let's get that one back. Yeah, and point them upstream. Make sure they've got plenty of kick in them. I think he's ready to go. Yeah, there we go. Fast and furious, isn't it? More bait in. Again, you see, I'm not feeding loads of bait. Oh, you can see him coming up, mate. Let's see if you can film that, Rich. You can film them coming up. I might catch Shala. Might have to get Mungvig out. Catching shallow on a river with my reputation. Oosh. Right, watch this, Rich. See if you can get them in, mate. Ready? Let's get it in again there. Oh, I saw him take it. There's one or two there. So, yeah, I'll tell you what. Tell you what, it's what we do, isn't it, mate? Yeah, it's just what we do. Keep that bait going in. So this is the beauty of using these nice soft action rods. They're just cushion absolutely everything. And there's another big bobby grayling in there. Oh yeah. Some more bait in. Look at them, would you? Think it's the same fish, Rich? Looks like it, doesn't it? Oh, look at them. Beautiful. And proper shellfish, Sam, I tell you. Laugh, come on. Is he ready? Is he kicking? He's ready. Right then. Oh, oh, now then. Not the end on this one, mate. 
Ooh. We'll end on this one today then, chaps and folks and lasses and kids and whoever's watching. Hamsters and squirrels and rabbits and dogs and cats. Everybody's watching. Oh, this is a bit of a bobby one, this one. Whoa, that's a proper one, that. that is a proper one. We spooked him, we spooked him. Oh. What can that one to end on? Probably a big squirrel, they never out of here, that. Wow, look at this one. Why? So they're getting on for two pounds that one. Look at that, and all snarled up. Yeah, hook's gone through it. All snarled up in my landing net. Can't get him out. No mind. Look at that to end on. Close on two pounds, a beautiful grayling there. What a session we've had as well. Uh, this is only the second swim I've fished. I was planning on showing you, you know, loads of different types of swims, but the fishing's been that good. I bet we've had well over sort of 40 grayling in just over two hours fishing. It just shows you what these rivers will produce this time of year. You can get the conditions right, and by far no means absolutely perfect today with the sun, but just a few maggots, you know, light trotting gear, be prepared to move and explore, uh, and you could have rewards like this. Oh, what a fish to end on. Mwah, let's get him back. Beautiful. Oh, go on you, my beauty. He's giving it all in that fight, hasn't he? Come on, all the way up. Come on. He's kicking, he's kicking. He's gone. Oh, yes. That's an oosh from me, and it was an oosh from him. I think I might carry on for another one though, cheeky.